Hello everyone. In today's episode, we will look um, take a look at how I implemented the labels, as you can see here. So it's amount of units in a stack, and also the bug mode that you can enable by pressing uh, the button D. Right. So I decided that instead of doing live coding, I will be doing an overview of uh, what I have implemented. So it basically will be like code tour, right? Much shorter, much more tighter, but more, I hope more interesting to read. So you won't have to see me going, uh, like making mistakes and um, fixing them and spending for like hours on each session. So I hope you like this format more. Um, let's get started. So uh, the first thing that I uh, did there, as you can see is, yeah, the debug mode. So, and you can see each tile has its own number. This is because I actually added tiles as entities, right? So each each square when you can position your unit is actual uh, an actual entity in, in DataScript, right? You can see that there is like lots of entities. Some of them are like more than twice and from last time. Uh, last time there was just 100. And this is because like each label is its own entity and each tile is its own entity as well. Okay, so let's go to the model. Uh, here you can see the tile, right? And it has two positions. One is coordinate and the other one is just position, right? So position is screen position. It's like in absolute coordinates and pixels, right? And coordinate is like a logical position, uh, as you can see here. So these numbers are basically, yeah, uh, coordinates, right? And then in render, if we have render tiles here, and it does like uh, set uh, transparent fill style, iterates or each tile and for its position and its coordinate that puts its coordinate. So it puts coordinate at the position of this time, each time, right? And the position of the tile is its center. So everything is uh, related, uh, everything is positioned relative to the center, right? Uh, well, yeah, and in this case, it seems a little bit wasteful because we have like a rectangle battlefield, right? But I thought that maybe it would be nicer to have uh, ex tiles explicitly because then you can uh, have like interesting battlefield configuration, right? So it doesn't have to be rectangular, it may be any shape. Uh, it may miss some pieces or like, uh, yeah, it, it may be of interesting shapes. And everything is in database. So everything that in there, you can step there. If it's not, the tile is not in database, you can't step there, right? Okay, so uh, the next uh, thing, yeah. And as I said, this is, was the first thing that I did. The, the second thing that I did is that everything is now positioned relative to the, uh, to the tile coordinate, right? So tile has position um, and uh, sprite, animation, and hover area. These um, black square squares, rectangles, are uh, actual hover area, you can see as I hover over them, they, they highlight, right? So uh, they also position uh, over the, uh, relative to the, uh, to the tiles. And so you can see here, oh yeah, let's, let's go to the main function. So this is a transaction that creates all tiles. It's basically just iterates or like uh, each row and then each column and creates a tile with two coordinate, with coordinate and position. Right? Uh, those numbers like a kind of absolute, but it's fine for now. Then uh, I have a function that places stacks. So instead of like uh, iterating everything uh, for each stack and repeating myself and setting default values, right? I wrote a single function that basically what it does, it creates a stack. And um, with all the details that are needed, right? And the way I call it is through transaction functions. So I actually call dbfm slash call, uh, which is a transaction function and I pass it the function and then the argument, in which case, in this case, we have only one argument, it's a map with parameters, right? And uh, when it happens, uh, when the data script sees something like that, what happens is it will uh, call this function that you passed, pass this ar uh, its argument there, and pass also a database value uh, right before it encountered this uh, database call, right, a function call. Okay, so in, and you must return a list of uh, transaction entities. Right? In our case, it's just single entity, just a map, and so we wrap this in a single element vector. 
and that map is well some map is just a helper that just um, removes a, a new values because you cannot insert nils in data script so you have to work around that and i find it convenient to to do as i usually do like to uh, i don't know remove nil uh, and uh, what, what else uh, when ifs and stuff like that selected for example if select is nil we don't need this attribute at all so a core map just um, takes care of that okay uh some map sorry so and uh, here we do the stuff that we did before. Uh, basically, create a stack with uh, refer now stack stacks reference tiles, right? So you know in, at which tile it is positioned. So this one has zero zero tile and so on. So it's direct referencing schema. You can see stack is here and stack tile is reference, right? So um, yeah, it's reference to that. Uh, not much to say. There's count, which is how many units are. Uh, in the stack, right? There is label. Label is also graphical element similar to sprite. So a render just render is stupid and it just knows how to render label at any given position. And it's the job of whoever creates the database to figure out at which position the label should be placed. Right? So in our case, it depends on the player. If player is left, then we position the label to the left of the unit or the left of the stack. If the player is right, we position it to the right of the stack. But as you can see here, we take tile position in both cases, right? So, and we move that uh, to the left or to the right. So uh, we, we move relative to center, we, we move four pixels down and then we either move 10 pixels left or 10 pixels right okay. and then there is label align which is uh, another trick that i did uh, which is basically yeah, as you can see these labels are aligned on the right border and those are aligned on the left border right so we have to uh, the current is always the same it's this point or it's this point uh, relative to the center but uh, the alignment is different right so I also have this attribute label called uh, label align which can be right bottom right top center bottom and so on I, I'll show you in a sec right so render knows how to handle that as well then we have sprite and sprite has position which is again relative to the tile position right so centers uh, match and uh, the y coordinate is doesn't match, right? Then uh, we should mirror only if it's the second player. We use animation as an argument. Uh, uh, animation unit type is passed uh, as an argument. Also, layers are passed as argument. So if uh, it's we have a player, so we figure out which layer to add. If it's selected, we also figure out which layer to add, right? And yeah, something like that. And then we call that function for once for each stack, basically. Okay. All this is a single transaction that produces like 220k, 240 uh, datums. Okay. And, and all it, uh, it all works pretty fast. Now, uh, let's take a look at how labels are rendered, right? So we go to render again, and there is, of course, render sprites, and there's render labels, right? So it's it's pretty similar to what we did in render sprites basically we uh, iterate over each label that has text right we figure out position and align from it uh, if we calculate the width of the text uh, before we place it uh, there is a function in canvas that does just that it tries to render like virtually renders a text, text and returns you a number okay and uh, given that width we yeah, we figure out the coordinates of the top left corner. It's actually bottom left corner, but whatever, right? And um, yeah, and depending on the line, we adjust this coordinate accordingly. Uh, you can also notice here that I did something a little bit unconventional, and I think you shouldn't be doing that, but I decided it was fun, so I, I left it. So a line is actually a single keyword that adjusts both like, um, adjust both vertical and horizontal horizontal alignment and i'm kind of abusing the way keywords are stored keywords are stored as a two separate parts the namespace and name and i, I am kind of uh, put in the namespace i put the horizontal alignment and in the name i put the vertical alignment. right so 
Here in render, I just uh, parse this keyword into two strings, namespace and name, and then each one is handled separately. Right? So the, the namespace is handled uh, here, and the uh, name is handled here. After uh, everything is done, I draw a rectangle, which is a background for a label, and then I put the text itself. So that's nothing tricky here. Um, yeah, that's it, more or less, I think. Uh, what else, what else, what else, what else? We have a uh, hover, uh, hovering, and this input uh, suggests, right? If you remember, it was uh, based on sprites, actually, which is totally incorrect, right? So it shouldn't be based on sprites. Uh, sprites are just big uh, picture, I don't know. Uh, they have nothing with the uh, selection area. Actually, hover area should be different um, from from sprite, right? So, for example, here uh, the hand is a little bit over the, its style, but it's fine. But we don't select if we hover here, we only select if we inside the tile wallet. Anyway, so uh, what I did is I'm now scanning tiles instead of sprites, right? For each tile here, I figure out which tag it belongs to because I, as I mentioned, stack has reference to a tile, so we can walk from stack to tile and from tile to stack, uh, both ways, actually. And if there is a stack, we, we remember it, right? So uh, the, instead of sprite entity ID here and uh, hover stack entity ID, sprite entity ID, we have stack entity ID, which is more correct because stack might have, I don't know, multiple sprites or who knows? So the stacks, uh, stacks are logical units and sprites are pure graphical units. So this way we actually decoupled input from render. I think we can we can almost remove it, uh, dependency from render. The only thing left is this transformation of coordinates, but yeah, it's fine. Um, yeah, and uh, we don't have input here as well, right? So, yeah, great. So the input system and the uh, render system are. Uh, separated they actually don't even access the same attributes so input doesn't care about sprites and uh, no, they all care about stacks so but anyways so this is how it's done it works as as before and uh, as i said you can click d uh, actually press d button to to see uh, the debug information in this case it's hover area and coordinates of tiles uh, that's it uh, for this episode. Let me know if you like this more or less and stay tuned for more updates. Bye-bye.